of America, along with three other Catalyst Award winners, are at the 2019 Catalyst Awards Conference happening today. And joining me now from that is Bank of America CEO Brian Moynihan. Welcome. Thank you for joining me. It's great to be here. Thank you for having me. And congratulations. And how did you guys go from getting 33% of women in senior leadership positions to 44% in just three years? Well, we leave nothing to chance. So as we do uh, selection processes and take a look at talent moving through our organization, we have a very detailed process by every uh, group that reports to me all the way through this, all the way through the, uh, down through the system where we watch to make sure the talent's moving forward uh, on a good basis. But it starts from having half the workforce women, and, and then as you promote managers, you're allowed to, you can, you have the content and the numbers of people to continue to increase the representation in the management ranks. And I'm curious how you guys have watched women's careers develop as they have children and then come back to the work, to their jobs afterwards. Does that become a, a big hurdle? Um, what special ways have you found of helping to manage those careers so that women are able to advance even while they're maybe taking a step back to look after their families? Well, we continue to it's, uh, provide benefits along all these dimensions in terms of child care. Uh, parental care, which is becoming a bigger issue, and then also what we call off-ramp and on-ramp that a lot of us have worked on this for years, where we try to maintain contact, help people get, come back into the workforce, either immediate, you know, immediately after their family leave, which we have 16 weeks, or later on after a few years. And we've built programs, and I think those are programs we, we need to get better at, honestly, because th there's a, a lot of talent that still we need to get back into the working uh, world where the, you know, there's a shortage of talented people and so we're pushing those systems and we've been building up again over the last few years but it's a combination of all things the benefits you provide yeah. the flexibility you provide the flexibility for family leave for both men and women and then ultimately that uh, on-ramp uh, work we do where we basically make ourselves known that you come back in and we'll look at what you want to do and then we'll try to find the right jobs for you yeah that's great what are you seeing in the broader labor market in general especially you guys have a lot of staffing obviously at the branch level you're out there across the country having to constantly look at that pipeline are things too strong are you seeing wage pressures what what do you see on the ground well start from a couple of basic uh, facts about our company in 2018 we hired 27,000 people from outside our company at the same time, we reskilled in the language that's used today by providing training capabilities and moving people inside the company to the other like amount. So we have tremendous access, a tremendous view of the markets, and so the hiring is strong. Um, the net headcount changes because the job content changes, but overall, we're hiring a lot of people from the market. The people who are leaving us are going to get good jobs and getting promotions places. Maybe the opportunity is not the same from here. Uh, retiring and other things, but it's an interesting play out there. When we look at it overall, when our clients tell us labor markets are very tight, wage growth in our company for everybody that would be one, two, three, four times median income or up for the last 10 years in a row has been 6% plus per wow. year in salaries and wage growth. So it's very strong. Um, and, 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 and we started with $15 a minimum starting wages almost two and a half years ago now. So it is a tight market. I'm no different from any other employer out there. The good news is we keep bringing people in and training them and getting them ready, and it seems that uh, we're able to maintain a very talented team. What's going on with mortgages lately? Because last year was kind of a strange one. We actually had GDP grow, but residential investment declined, and part of that's new home construction. But we know rates have gone up a little bit. Mortgage applications wilted. Uh, are things looking better here just in the last couple of weeks, or what are you seeing? Well, we've seen mortgage activity kick back up. And, you know, Bank of America, it's, it's never going to change the course of history for us. It's a, it, since we changed our position in business, we have about 3% direct to consumer market share. But the number of application volumes kicked up nicely as rates have come back down. But back away from just the day-to-day -day spot, what's going on in mortgages and volumes, the reality is that housing has a lot of investment ahead of it, has a lot of room to run, and household formation, a million plus, is, good, is, is solid. So I think you'll see housing continue to be, it's well constructed, the financing's there, uh, it isn't overheated, uh, prices are still moving up. And so I think that's a, an area that could help extend the recovery. And, there, and a lot of people are seeing that. When rates are rising, people got worried as rates sort of flattened out and came down, especially the tenure and the, obviously the mortgage plays off that, you saw the expansion. So yeah. there'll be ebbs and flows every quarter, weather, whatever, but generally housing is very constructive right now. And how's loan demand overall? You know, it's one of the fascinating things has been to watch the Federal Reserve ease monetary conditions so much, to watch those reserves go up so much at banks, but then not to be deployed into the real economy because for a while there wasn't much loan demand and everything was kind of stagnant. 
That's been true even lately as, as growth has picked up a little bit. How is loan demand looking these days across commercial, industrial, and other uh, areas? The loan demand is pretty consistent where, uh, where it was, mid-single digits, uh, a little bit better in some businesses, et cetera. You know, so you get trade-offs. But we, we've, we've driven responsible growth at Bank of America. So we've been pretty consistent in how our loans have grown. I'd say that as you came from 16, 17, 18, you saw commercial loan demand slow down a little bit. You've seen it pick back up, and so that's good. Small business demand, which is you know, loans to maybe 5 million under revenue companies, of, of which 40% of Bank of America are women-owned, just to keep on the theme of what we're here today. Uh, it, you're seeing that grow uh, faster, more like 9, 10%, and it has for several years. So we feel good about general loan demand, but it's going to be consistent with the 2%, you know, 2 to 2.25% growth economy, which is going to be maybe 150, 200 basis, better point, basis points better than that. That's great. I mean, you know, again, that, that suggests that we're still moving in, in a positive direction. One of the things, uh, <laughs> Mr. Moynihan, I wanted to ask you about was uh, this story about J.P. Morgan in, encroaching, it says, on Bank of America's territory, expanding into the heart of Bank of America country, uh, looking at new markets in Charlotte, your hometown, Raleigh, Greenville, Kansas City, Nashville, and so forth. What's the company's response? The company's response is to continue to what we've been doing for the last decade, which is continue to expand in the markets uh, that we find opportunities, continue to fine tune and continue to grow our deposit base and our consumer business. And so you've seen us outgrow everybody in the market over the last three or four years. You can look at the data. So we welcome all competitors. It's a great competitive framework uh, in our industry, very liquid. We have many competitors in all these markets, and our job is just to do better than everybody else. How important is the branch? You guys obviously have done a lot with Erica to make mobile banking more easy, uh, friendly, accessible for people and so forth. Can mobile, can, can my mobile phone supplant my bank branch and is that better economics uh, for you guys? Are you looking at that as a, a future strategy? It could if you wanted it to. This comes down to customer choice. And so our job is to have a, a, a mixed business system which has both the best mobile and digital capabilities. We have 36 million digital customers, 26 million uh, mobile banking customers. We have 4,200 branches, 800,000 people come to our branch every day, not every day. And so you need to be excellent at both. And then we have the call centers that take millions and millions of calls a year. And so you need to be excellent at both. And it takes all kinds of systems. Some customers will do all of one. Some customers will do all of other. But that's actually the rare sort of tales. The reality is everybody uses everything and loves having everything, and that's, just, that's a good business model. And that's why we're building branches in place like Pittsburgh, where we have a quarter million customers already. We're building branches underneath those to give them the full services of our capabilities, or, or Indianapolis, or Columbus, or Cleveland, and Cincinnati, and Salt Lake, and Minneapolis. We're putting that physical plant because we already have a lot of customers who aren't getting the full benefits of having our great franchise with them. And finally, because you're talking a lot about these different parts of the country, um, we know that Silicon Valley has been strong. We know that uh, some of the cities like Nashville have been strong. But where are you really seeing the strength and the weakness in today's economy? It's, it's, it's solid across the board. And you, you've got lots of experts uh, on a given day that will talk about you know, the, the, some of the farm areas are, are, have been a little bit uh, tougher for people. We're not in them as much. But the reality is, is that there's been a rural to urban move in America, and, and that means the cities are a little bit stronger. Just the nature of work has changed. Uh, but that's a decades, decades long process. And so we feel good about the markets we're in. We don't see weakness in any market. We see strength in other markets, uh, in all markets. What we see is more strength in some markets, and that's your example, Silicon Valley or the Boston area, the Charlotte area, Los Angeles, or parts of Florida, parts of Texas. But overall, the economy grew you know, nearly 3% last year, as best we can tell. We'll see what it finalizes at. And we think it's going to grow between 2 and a, a two to 2% 2, 2 this year, which is as fast as growth as most of the year since the recovery. And, and we feel, we'll take advantage of that. Yeah, it's not 3%, but we'll take it. Uh, finally, what does Brian Moynihan do for St. Patrick's Day? Uh, and, I do what everybody else does. I have corned beef, cabbage, and potatoes, and, uh, and some carrots, and uh, have a good time with my family. <laughs> that sounds great. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today. Congratulations again.